The second largest country in Africa lies in the heart of the continent. Known as the DRC, the Democratic Republic of the Congo suffered civil war between 1997 and 2003. Perhaps the only good thing to come of the civil wars are the country's vast, untouched forests, which weren't logged because war was bad for business. But what will happen to this vital resource now that stability is returning to the DRC? And how can local communities take ownership of this, their home, and secure a better future? The DRC has not had any formal system of land tenure. I've been working with the African Wildlife Foundation and we've been working with them to lend our spatial data expertise, um, remote sensing capabilities, analysis of satellite imagery to help them with their on the ground zoning activities which they're formalizing with the government of the Democratic Republic of the Congo for land rights and for land use planning with local communities. Spatial data expertise, remote sensing capabilities, what do these words mean exactly? For over 10 years, this satellite has been orbiting the Earth. It's called Landsat 7, and with every loop it takes around our planet, it collects information about the Earth's surface, which people like Janet can then interpret. So we can feed information derived from Landsat imagery into a variety of models for land use planning in this landscape. And one thing, one way we've been using it is to identify the areas of highest conservation priority. So we've been working in the Moringa Lapore Wamba landscape, which I sometimes call MLW. Um, it's in northern DRC. It's a bit about the size of South Carolina. Um, and it's full of tropical moist forest. So using Landsat imagery, we were able to zoom in on this particular forested area connecting two protected areas in the east central part of MLW landscape. And it's an important corridor for the migration of bonobos between the protected areas, as well as other terrestrial species. Once the AWF identified this critical area for conservation, it began working with the government and local communities on mapping the region. The mapping process has a dual benefit of preserving biodiversity and helping local villagers to secure their own land use rights. Oui, carte ezali di kanisi moko ya malamu. Po carte ezali makoma, ezali na papier. Bo atake bandelo ya lopango nanga ezali. Bana tango mususu bayebi esika lopango e bandi pe lopango e sukite. Me lukola sika wa grasi na zonaji tango babimisi par exemple carte ya lopango oyu Mwana akozala na facilité munene po na kuyeba esika lopango ebandi pe lopango esuki pe ekozala epana ye dokpo soki bato baye akola kisabango facilement so pour autant ke alo bake tozala kande boye lopango na biso ebanda kande boye lokola carte ezali ezali document munene oyo ekede eh, ata na génération ya futur during the DRC war, humans hid in the forest to escape violent conflict. It was their refuge. And still now, the forest provides them with food, air, and shelter. With the help of Landsat imagery, this vital resource can be managed and preserved for the benefit of wildlife and generations to come.